Every single day, thousands of creators open up Blender's shader editor and casually throw in the principled BSDF, or the diffused BSDF, the glossy, the transmission, emission BSDF, and so on and so forth, without truly realizing or appreciating how the BSDF is literally used everywhere when it comes to 3D texturing and rendering. Even though we see it all the time, most people don't realize that this single concept, the BSDF, is one of the core algorithms behind all realistic rendering. And in today's video, that is exactly what we're going to talk about. I want to give you a deeper appreciation of the algorithm behind the BSDF, the invisible math that makes all of your 3D rendering even possible. So let's start with the basics. BSDF stands for Bidirectional Scattering Distribution Function. That's a mouthful, but from the name itself, we can already understand a lot. It's a function, which you can think of as an equation or an algorithm that tells us how likely it is for light to scatter in a certain direction after hitting a surface. And the word bidirectional means it considers both where the light comes from and where it's going, essentially linking the incoming light direction and the outgoing view direction. In simpler words, it tells us the probability of a light ray going in a specific direction after interacting with a material. Let's consider a ray tracing or path tracing engine like Cycles. There are light rays that come from the camera, one from each pixel, that shoot out into the 3D scene. These rays hit surfaces and bounce around until they either reach a light source or get terminated because they've hit the maximum number of bounces set by the user. At each bounce, the ray picks up information about the material it hit, and that's how the color value for that pixel is determined. At every bounce, Blender asks one crucial question, which is where should this ray go next? Answering that question is exactly what the BSDF does. If you're curious about the path the light takes, how rays travel, bounce, and carry data across the scene, you should definitely check out my Demystifying the Light Path Node video as it goes in depth on the path tracing side of things. But in this video, we're focusing on the materials side of that story. In the real world, there are a few different ways that light can interact with a surface. It can either reflect off the surface or pass through it. When reflecting off a surface, the light can behave in two main ways. The first one being undergoing specular reflections. This is the clean mirror-like bounce. This follows the law of reflection. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, or in other words, the angle in is equal to the angle out. This is what happens on every shiny material like polished metals or mirrors. The other type of reflection is called diffuse reflections. This happens when light enters the material bounces around inside and then exits in a random direction. This randomness is why you can't see a clear reflection on matte surfaces even when they're very smooth. The light gets scattered in many directions and hence gets diffused. Now because this scattering is probabilistic, we can't exactly know where the light ray will go after hitting the diffuse surface. That's exactly where the BSDF comes in. It gives us a probability distribution of directions the light is most likely to go. So if you visualize it, it looks like a 2D lobe, brighter in the center, where light is more likely to reflect, and fading towards the edges, where it's less likely. Since there's randomness involved in where each light ray goes, two rays from pixels that are right next to each other 
might end up hitting completely different parts of the scene, leading to totally different color values. This is why early renders often look noisy. To fix that, Cycle repeats this process many times, firing thousands of rays per pixel, sampling different directions according to the BSDF, and then averaging the results. It does this statistically using an algorithm called Monte Carlo, which potentially could be a future video by itself. However, this algorithm is what gives you the final realistic noise-free render. The BSDF is used in every one of those samples to guide the direction of each ray realistically. To go a layer deeper, BSDFs are actually made of two sub-functions. The BRDF, which is the bidirectional reflectance distribution function, which is used for reflections, and the BTDF, which is the bidirectional transmittance distribution function, which is used for transmission. The BRDF calculates how light reflects off of surfaces, whether it's metallic, glossy, or diffuse. The BTDF calculates how light passes through transparent materials like glass or water. This is where Snell's law comes in. It governs how light bends when moving between materials with different refractive indices. So when you set an IOR value in your glass shader, that's literally telling Blender how much light should bend based on Snell's law. When the surface is perfectly smooth, that is a roughness value of zero, the transmission follows Snell's law exactly. But as roughness increases, Blender starts taking microfacet scattering into account, simulating tiny surface imperfections that scatter refracted light in different directions. So what exactly is microfacet scattering? We've already talked about diffuse scattering, where light enters the first layer and exits randomly after bouncing inside the surface. But there's another type of scattering that happens on the surface itself, and that is the microfacet scattering. Even the smoothest looking materials isn't perfectly flat at the microscopic level. It's covered in countless tiny ridges and bumps, like millions of tiny mirrors all angled slightly differently. These microfacets reflect light in slightly different directions, which creates that soft blurred reflection we see on glossy materials. Blender simulates this using microfacet models inside the BSDF. That roughness slider you adjust in the shader nodes, that's literally controlling how the microfacets are distributed. And to decide how they're oriented, Blender uses algorithms like GGX or Beckman. GGX actually stands for Trowbridge Writes and is the default in Blender and is used by most modern renderers. It gives a smoother, more realistic highlight and works well with HDRI lighting. However, GGX has one caveat. It tends to lose energy when roughness is high. That makes the reflections look unnaturally dim. That's why newer algorithms like Multiscatter GGX exist. They simulate multiple internal reflections between microfacets, which preserves energy and gives a more accurate result. This ensures physically accurate lighting, even on rough surfaces. So we've covered diffuse scattering, specular reflections, transmission, and microfacet roughness. But there's one last type of scattering that BSDFs account for, and that is the subsurface scattering. This happens when light enters a material and scatters within it before exiting somewhere else. It's crucial for rendering organic materials like skin, wax, or marble, where light doesn't just bounce off the surface, but actually travels through the object a bit. It's what gives organic materials that soft, glowing quality. In Blender, this is handled right inside the principled BSDF. It tells the render engine how deep the light should travel inside the surface and how it scatters before coming out. So far, everything we've discussed 
applies beautifully to cycles, where rays are actually being traced throughout the scene, as it's a path tracing engine. So it literally traces rays through the scene and asks the BSDF where the ray should go next. But EV works differently. EV is a real-time rasterizing engine. It doesn't shoot rays or simulate bounces. Instead, it fakes lighting using clever tricks like screen space reflections, light probes, irradiance volumes, and blurred environment maps. When you use a BSDF shader in EV, it doesn't calculate probabilities like Cycle does. Instead, it approximates which part of the environment map or screen should be sampled and blurred based on your material's roughness and view direction. This is why EV is screen space dependent. If an object goes off camera, it disappears from reflections as well. However, in EV Next, which is from Blender version 4.2 onwards, we now have limited ray tracing through GPU based ray queries, even for EV. This allows for real ray traced reflections or ambient occlusion, but only up to one bounce and it requires compatible hardware. So to put it simply, Cycle uses BSDS to simulate how light actually behaves, whereas EV uses BSDS to mimic or approximate what it thinks light might actually do by using a whole bag of tricks and approximations to do it fast. Now let's look at how real-time game engines like Unreal or Unity handle BSDFs. They use the same underlying physics, but since they have to render at 60 plus FPS, they can't afford to calculate the BSDF for every pixel in real time. So instead, they pre-compute a lot of that data and store it in lookup tables, which are called LUTs. These LUTs are like tiny textures that already contain information about how light should behave at different roughness levels, viewing angles, and light angles. When rendering, the engine simply samples those tables instead of redoing all the math, which makes real-time physically-based shading possible. This is why Blender's principled BSDF looks so similar to Unreal's standard material. They're all using the same fundamental models underneath, especially GGX. Finally, let's talk about the bidirectional part of the BSDF. Here's the key idea. The BSDF doesn't just calculate how light bounces out of the surface. It considers both the incoming and outgoing directions at once. This is what ensures reciprocity, meaning light behaves the same whether it's traveling from the light to the camera or from the camera to the light. In rendering, this is crucial because we're tracing light rays backward from the camera to the scene. But we still need the results to match real world physics where light would go from a light source to our eyes. By being bidirectional, the BSDF ensures that light energy is conserved and the result remains physically accurate no matter which way you trace it. So some advanced render engines like Arnold or LuxCore even use bidirectional path tracing, where they trace rays from both the light source and the camera and connect them in the middle. And the BSDF allows this by working identically in both directions. So hopefully this gives you a strong foundation for understanding why nearly every shader in Blender has BSDF in its name. It's the algorithm that decides how every bit of light interacts with every surface, from metals, to glass, to cloth, to skin. And while we've covered the core concepts, such as diffuse, specular transmission, microfacet, and subsurface scattering, the BSDF actually goes even deeper. It also includes phenomena like Fresnel, anisotropy, and a ton of other details that we'll explore in future videos. So if you've enjoyed this video and want to truly understand what's going on under the hood of Blender, definitely stick around for the rest of my demystifying series. 
and check out the previous videos in this series if you haven't already. Comment below what algorithms you think is most underrated in Blender or what you'd like to see me break down next. I hope this video gave you a deeper appreciation for how much brilliance goes into even the simplest looking shader nodes. Until the next few videos come out, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and don't forget to stay creative.